The justice system is created to protect the innocent, convict criminals, and provide a fair justice process to help keep order across the country. The main goal is to keep citizens safe. Judicial officers presiding over these cases took an oath to adjudicate cases without fear, favor, or prejudice, and to uphold, protect, and promote constitutional or human rights. Vulnerable witnesses have the right to enjoy special arrangements and protective measures to ensure that they can fully participate in court proceedings without being further traumatized. Judges have a responsibility to uphold the fairness and integrity of the justice system by ensuring that gender-based violence trials are conducted in a fashion that does not subordinate the fact-finding process to myth and stereotype. Today, we'll witness the trial of a man who brutally assaulted his wife and how a trial should not pan out. See if you can spot why I say so, and particularly where there is any judicial stereotyping present in the conduct of the presiding officer. Judicial stereotyping is a common and pernicious barrier to justice, particularly for women victims and survivors of violence. Such stereotype causes judges to reach a view on cases based on preconceived beliefs rather than relevant facts and actual inquiry. Your Worship, I'd like to call the next matter on our own, State versus David David, who had previously pleaded not guilty. The Combating of Domestic Violence Act applies, Your Worship. We are ready to proceed. Mr. Luteni. Your Worship, the defense, the defense is ready to proceed. Ms. Prosecutor, is this again one of those house molest cases? Were you not supposed to mediate these cases rather than to waste the court's time? Your Worship, the defense was willing to mediate, but unfortunately our colleagues from the state, the prosecution, is being unreasonable, Your Worship. Your Worship, the bosses said that we must proceed with this type of cases. Well, let's move on with it. I trust that we'll be able to finish this in an hour. Court Orly, can you get the witness? She is just outside. Your Worship, it is also an instruction from my seniors that in cases such as these, where the witness is a vulnerable person, she may also testify behind closed doors using a CCTV with a support person. Your Worship. Mr. Luteni, do you have anything to say to the application? We object, Your Worship. This is husband and wife, Your Worship, married for more than 10 years. This is ridiculous. Those provisions don't even apply for a case like this. It's for a case, it's for those other cases, Your Worship. Besides, the prosecution, Your Worship, is trying to delay this case from being finalized, Your Worship, as it pleases the court. Your Worship, with all due respect, according to the bosses, it is to protect the witness. Application denied. No, 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 no. People in the gallery, remain seated. You may remain in the courtroom. You don't have to go outside. Your full names for the record. El Elizabeth David. I'm asking, can you just be loud? Elizabeth. We are recording your full names for the record. Elizabeth David. Do you swear that the evidence that you are going to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, raise your right hand and say, so help me God. Okay. Your right hand, ma'am. This hand, your honor? That is your right hand, isn't it? Do not refer to me as your honor. Please address me as your worship. I'm sorry. So help me God. Your witness is sworn in, Miss Prosecutor. Your Worship, can the witness sit down? You may proceed. 
An incident happened on the 25th of December 2021. Can you tell the court exactly what happened that day? D does he have to be here? I'm not comfortable talking in front of him. Oh, the court has made the ruling. Please do not waste my time. Miss Prosecutor, you may continue with your witness. Please answer the question, ma'am. We were at home. My husband, uh, three children, aged five, three, and the last born, who is eight months old, when he, my husband, started swearing at me, saying that I should learn how to pick food because he cannot be married to a woman that cannot cook properly. And this upset me because he, he only emotionally abuses me. <laughs> even and cheats on me, even though I always make the best meals for him. Stop lying! You are a terrible cook. How dare you do not know how to make stew? You are useless and disappointing. How dare you call me useless? I'm the provider of that family. You are the one who is sleeping around. Mr. Lutenny, please control your client. We are on a time limit here. My apologies, Your Worship. We beg the court's indulgence. <laughs> he then he threw, he threw it. <laughs> Prosecutor, what is happening with your witness? Did you not prepare her for trial? Ma'am, you cannot look for stuffs in your handbag while you testify. Continue. I apologize, Your Worship. Miss Davids, please continue to tell this court about what exactly happened on that day. How are we supposed to understand your testimony when you cannot stop crying? Please continue. He then threw the food in my face. He then, he then pulled me off the chair and I fell on the floor. He started, he started to kick me repeatedly. And when I was sorry, and he started to pull my hair out. Out completely. <laughs> this is ridiculous. How am I supposed to make a ruling <coughs> when the testimony of your witness is not clear? Please continue. He then he pulled down my skirt and he <laughs> Miss Tisse. What are you doing? You are disrupting this court proceedings. Please, go back to your seat. Oh, sorry, Your Worship. <laughs> he then, he left. He left the window to his present. I called my mother. And she took me to the hospital. Where well, I was admitted for three days. <laughs> Miss Davis, did you sustain injuries? I have a scar on my forehead. It, it was an open wound. And I had... I had, I had patches on my skull where he had pulled out the braids. And my, my left eye... It was... It is a local left eye was swollen and clouded with blood clots. <laughs> My lip was busted. <laughs> Your Worship, the state has no further questions. Cross examination, Mr. Luteni. Expose the truth. She's a lazy lying woman. Miss David. Were you so bound that day? Well, I, 
I drank, I drank about three glasses of champagne because it was Christmas Day and my husband had bought champagne. Why did you call your husband useless? I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I, I thought of ignorance. Were you too drunk to know if you were angry? I was angry. So you were drunk and you were angry? I wasn't drunk. Did you or did you not just admit that you had three glasses of champagne? Yes. And did you not just admit that you were angry, as a matter of fact? <laughs> yes. So then you were drunk and you were angry. Miss David, look at me when I talk to you. Do you admit that you were drunk and angry? Yes. Speak up, Miss David. Were you drunk and were you angry? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Again. So you were too drunk <laughs> to remember. Again, Miss David, you were drunk and you were angry on the 25th of December, 2021, on Christmas Day. And you were with your three children, all under the age of six, of which one of them was just a little baby of eight months old. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't drunk. You admitted to this court that you were drunk just a few minutes ago. Now you say you were not. So you are also a liar, it seems. No, I... <laughs> no, what? You said you drank three glasses of champagne. And when I asked you again, you said you didn't say it. Why are you lying? Tell the court the truth. You were drunk and you were angry. You admitted it to this court. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you say yes? So now, again, you admit that you were drunk, you were angry, and now, effectively, you admit that you lied when you said no. So, you were drunk, and you were angry, and now you are a liar. If you say so. You called my client, your husband, a useless husband. This made him upset, and he pulled you off your chair. Yes, he pulled me off the chair. <laughs> Only because you provoked him. You called him a useless husband. <laughs> yes. He did not hit you. He did not kick you. That must have been a figment of your imagination. A fabrication for that matter. After all, you were drunk and you were angry. You were angry because you wanted some expensive pieces of jewelry. And did not like the necklace that he bought for you for Christmas. For all we know, you assaulted yourself and now you want to blame my client. No, he assaulted me. It's not about the necklace. My client did not actually rape you. How can a husband, a husband, rape his own wife? It is your duty as a wife towards your husband to please him. Your Worship, no, no, I have no further questions for this witness. No, you're not listening to me. The state has no questions in re-examination. Uh, the witness may be excused, Your Worship. No, no. Let's go, you're wasting no, the course time. No, let's go. you're not you're listening worship. to me. Let's go, let's go, you're wasting the course time. Your Worship, that is the state's case. The accused person's demeanor is indifferent. Surely it's not necessary for me to waste the court's time and expect my client to testify. And surely, Your Worship, my client cannot be expected to refute these ridiculous allegations. As it pleases the court, Your Worship. Your Worship, with all due respect, the state did place sufficient evidence before this court the accused person has a case to answer. Mr. David, you may stand up. Now in the case of State versus David, David, accused, you are charged with a count of assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm, read with the provisions 
of the Combating of Domestic Violence Act. Now, at the end of the state's case, your counsel, Mr. Luteni, requested this court to return a verdict of not guilty, to find you not guilty and discharged in terms of section 174 due to lack of evidence. Now, clearly, the complainant who was a single witness in this matter, she was drunk. Alcohol was involved here. Furthermore, her evidence is incoherent. She kept on crying all the time throughout her testimony. There were too many inconsistencies in her evidence. Therefore, there is no evidence upon which a reasonable person acting carefully may convict. Therefore, accused, you are found not guilty and discharged. Do you understand your verdict? Mr. David, the matter is finalized. You are a free man. You can go home. Court agenda. Rise in court. I told you you didn't have a case. Told you. Huh? There was nothing here. Man, that is good. I knew my son was going to make it out of the way. I saw you coming. Hi. I can't believe it. This is not how court proceedings should go. The judicial officer epitomized how judicial officers stereotype and demonstrated how they should not conduct themselves. The judicial officer left the witness unprotected and did not stop the unreasonably long protracted cross-examination. She perpetuated the stereotype that women are emotional and unstable. She showed a worrying lack of empathy when the witness testified and saw her crying as a reason to find her incoherent. She was in a hurry to be done and seemed not interested in doing it right but merely rushing through it. The accused appeared to be dominant in the proceedings. He spoke out of turn, laughed at the witness and made comments unchecked by the court. The judicial officer passed judgment without considering the argument made by the prosecutor that the accused had a case to answer to. It is evident that the judicial officer decided the outcome early in the proceedings. She also displayed a lack of judicial etiquette by not letting the issue of the CCTV be properly ventilated. When she first looked at the charge sheet, even before hearing the parties, she decided that the case ought to have been mediated. Though she fits the description of a vulnerable witness in section 1423432 of the CPA, the judicial officer was irate. She was battered by the lawyer and subjected to a long and cruel protracted cross-examination. She became the one on trial, ill-prepared by the prosecutor, and was subjected to secondary trauma. What other inappropriate moments can you spot?